Hi, I'm Max. I'm an engineer and inventor. And a while back, I invented, discovered, accidentally this machine. It's called the Bageltron 2000, and it opens up portals to other dimensions. It was originally intended to be a quantum bagel toaster. I really went wrong somewhere. Don't know exactly how I made a thing that opens up portals, but here we are. I'm documenting my journeys to all these different dimensions with this podcast. I'm going to go through the portal that just opened up here from the Bageltron 2000 and see where it sends me. Here we go. Okay, it's... I'm in like a dark, small closet. It looks like some kind of a supply or cleaning closet. This is not my garage, that's for sure. All right, uh, light. Okay, yep. Yes, this is definitely the supply closet. A lunchroom. And oh, there's. Hey, Wilson. Maxwell. What are you? What are you, what are you doing here? Well, funny you should ask. I just came from a portal that's in that closet there. Maxwell, I thought you were sick. Yeah, that's what he said. So I go by Max, actually, and I'm not the Maxwell that you know. What? Because Maxwell we know said he was sick. Yeah, not hiding in a broom closet. Sure. Again, I wasn't hiding in the broom closet. I just, there's a portal in there, and it leads to another dimension, my dimension, where I know you, Wilson. Wilson. I don't. I don't know you. Nobody calls me Wilson. I'm. I'm Frank. You work in the cubicle right next to me. If your name's not Wilson, what is your name then? Well, it is Wilson, but only like my grandma calls me Wilson. I go by Will. Okay, we got Will and Frank. I've never met either of you technically. What? I'm Max. Nice to meet you. I'm from another dimension. In my dimension, where we are right now is my house. Uh, it looks like we're not in a house here. I we got a supply closet. Uh, looks like a lunch room of some kind. Were here. you like sick with a fever? Like, are you delirious? Is that what this is? No. Just to remind you, Maxwell, in this dimension, if we show up to work not in business casual, we will quickly find ourselves without a job. Yeah. Okay. So this is a workplace. Good. We're getting somewhere. Of course. Yes. What kind of workplace is this? We are. Cardboard salesman. Yeah. Cardboard salesman. Best in the biz. This is definitely very different from my world. Again, it, there's a house here. I live in it in my dimension. But I guess here there's an office building. And we sell cardboard. Yeah. Well, you guys sell cardboard. You sell it as well. And the Max that you know. Right. Excuse me. The Maxwell that you know. Right, Maxwell. Sells cardboard. That's right. He does a pretty good job at it. So that's all he does, though. Doesn't tinker, invent. Tinker. No no tech type. I thought I saw him writing some poetry mm. mm-hmm. the one time. Sounds like he's pretty different from me. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about this cardboard business? Oh, we are Johnson, Johnson, and Wiener, the cardboard company. Uh-huh. Yeah. We're number uh, six, I think, in the nation. We sell cardboard boxes here. Well, just boxes. We can supply you with any sort of cardboard needs. And what other kinds of cardboard needs might someone have? Instead of having gingerbread man, you can get cardboard man, Mm -hmm. and you can make cardboard angels instead of snow angels. Yep. It works real good. That is definitely a sales tactic I would not have expected. And that's why we are sixth in the nation. Right. All right. We try to think out of the box here. Ah. (laughs) All right. You must use that one a lot. I do. All right. (laughs) That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have to write that one down for... You know, all the cardboard sales I'm not doing in my dimension. Right. But can you tell me a little more about the Seattle area here? Is it, so, is this the city of Seattle? Yeah, of course. And here on Queen Anne, is not mostly residential then? No, this is all warehouses. Okay. All right, that sounds pretty different, very different vibe than in my world. It's a lot of houses, residential, you know, some restaurants, a few grocery stores, that kind of thing. Mm, No, yeah, this is all warehouses here. Why would you put houses up here? Well, it's lovely view. Oh, I guess if you like oceans. Most people do in my world. That's not something, something people are into here. Weird. No. So where are most of the houses there, then, in this area? Inland. Hmm. Inland. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. I think if you just keep staring at, at water, you end up getting seasick. I don't enjoy that. 
All right, tell me more about the kinds of things that you do with the cardboard. Oh, well, we have our cardboard furniture. Like couches, love seats, stools. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can buy all of our furniture, completely furnish a house with your furniture, and then if your house burns down, you're out like, I don't know, 26 bucks. Is that a pretty typical way that people might furnish a house then here with cardboard? Yes, because we also tend to have a lot of cats in the area, and mm-hmm. we all know that kitties love their cardboard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In my world, furniture is typically wood. That's expensive. And, you know, upholstery. Mm. Upholstery? Some filling, you know, make it soft. Maybe some springs, that kind of thing. Oh. That's not what the furniture's like wow. here. No, not here. Okay, how many cardboard companies are there here? Fifteen. Fifteen. Only 15 cardboard companies in the whole nation. No, in Seattle area. Oh, just in Seattle? Yeah. Okay. And they're all pretty big then? Barely, yeah. Hmm. Not a lot of technology industry in the Seattle area here then? I mean, I think I think cardboard's good technology. I mean, we are trying to break into the technology business. We are trying to make cups that can hold hot or cold liquids out of our cardboard. Mm-hmm. Right, no technology. I I mean things like cell phones, internet, that kind of thing. Uh, I think Bob had an idea for some smart cardboard. Like the series of tubes? Send your little messages down the tubes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yes. Tubes made of cardboard. Of course. How else would you make tubes? Right. How else, indeed. Do you have the internet? Cell phones? Things like that? What's a cell phone? Smartphones? Anything like that? No. How can a phone be smart? Nah. You just use it for talking. Uh-huh. Okay. What about computers, then? Yeah, we got computers. Mm-hmm. Sure. They're the people that add our numbers. Oh, no, no, no. I mean a device that you use to do computing. It's electronic. Electronic. It can be relatively small or it might sit on your desk. Use it to write documents. Well, I guess you could put Jerry on your desk. And they powered by tonic? What now? You said tonic? No, I don't think I said that. I think he did. So, something, you said like electron, tonic? Electronic? Is just a bunch of drunk people that are plugging in your numbers? You people got problems with the sauce where you from? Mm. No, no, so that would be electronic. Yeah. Oh, so not tonic. Oh, I misheard. I'm so sorry. Right, right. Okay, so you don't have really any kind of electronics here. So those are, that would be any kind of devices powered by electricity that can do any kind of computing tasks? No? You do this all by hand then, all your accounting, things like that. Yeah, this is handcrafted cardboard, yes. Okay, cool, cool. All right, well, so what does your typical day look like here? Get up in the morning, what, read newspaper? Walk me through a typical day. This is news cardboard, yes. We don't read newspaper. And my favorite way to get to work in the morning is we have these little sleds made out of cardboard and you will just rip right down a hill. Ooh. It is fun. Yeah. There is a lot of cardboard here and not much else is the feeling that I'm getting. What else do you need? In my world, we have a lot of technology. We have entertainment. Again, we have wood, furniture made of wood. Maybe some what this mm, cushioning. High mighty with your wood over there. Sure. So you're cutting down trees and pulping them to yeah. make cardboard. Right. But you're not you're not turning them into lumber for wood. No. It's wasteful. All right, so how how is lumber wasteful? You can only get like two or three boards out of a tree, but I can get whole semi truck load of furniture out of a tree with cardboard. All right, sure. You sell directly to consumers these these cardboard furnishings and cardboard crafts and things like that, or do you sell? to retail stores that then channel that. How, how does that work? Well, we do do a lot of wholesale. That's how we started in this business. Mm-hmm. But we are starting to move into retail space as well with our new ideas, like our cardboard men and our cardboard angels. And the baby and things gates. Things of that nature. The cardboard baby gates. Mm-hmm. We still have some problems to work out with them. Yeah. But what kind of problems do you run into with the cardboard baby gates? Well, the babies like to chew through them. Yeah. Or just push them. Uh-huh. So, cardboard umbrella, I thought was going to be a great idea. Did not work. Not so much. What are the buildings made of here? Steel. Brick? Steel and brick. Yeah. But not lumber. No. Yeah. Because 
Lumber can light on fire. Yeah. And then you build them to fall down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Haven't you ever read The Three Little Pigs? Right. That is a book that we have in my world. Yeah. I, and I have read it. And that wolf, he huffed and he puffed and he blew that house right down. Yep. Didn't build it out of cardboard. Sure. So bricks and steel, not That's lumber. Right. That's right. And high density cardboard. On the inside of the buildings? In some places, yes. Uh huh. All right. Well, wouldn't that burn then? No. So you have flame retardant. Right. Yeah. You put enough chemical on it, and it, it won't burn. So you're doing all this business here over the phone. You have phones, though. Yes. yes. We do have phones, but we also have traveling salesmen, of which you are one. Yeah. And we don't know why you are here instead of out in the field. Right. Again, I'm not the Max or, or Maxwell that you know. Right. So that's why I'm not in the field. He's probably is in the field or or homesick or what, what did you, I thought you, either way, I'm not him. Mm. So that's why I'm not in the field or knowing any of this stuff about cardboard. Cardboard fireplace, cardboard fish tank. Spectacular failures, both of them. I didn't realize how much people really liked looking at the fish when they were in the tank. That so you, was, so you've got the... You've got the cardboard to hold the water, and it holds the fish. Yeah. It's just... For a while. It's just people don't go for that because they can't see the fish. They couldn't see them fishies, and then the water overcame the cardboard. Yeah. I think this is also why we don't like looking at water so much. It's just It's kind of a failure point in our business. Yeah, water would be a bit of a sore spot, I suppose, right. if... If it was always destroying your work. Yeah. But you guys are mostly just salesmen. Mm-hmm. It sounds That's like. Right. Well, we've come up with some ideas. Right. Yeah, you've told me a number of those. Pretty interesting stuff, I gotta say. Mm-hmm. So what do you do for fun here? I like to draw horses. I like to knit. All right. You knit. What kind of things do you knit? I will knit shirts for people. You did not like the shirt that I knitted you for Christmas last year, Maxwell. That was a nice shirt. I click marbles. Sometimes I eat them. Wait, hang on. You Sometimes you eat the marbles? Yeah. I get them back eventually. All right. So you never lose your marbles? No. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay, so as cardboard salesmen, run me through a typical sales call that you might do. Let's role play for a minute here. So uh-huh. I'm a local business person, and I just called you to find out about the cardboard solutions that you could offer my business, which is, say, a restaurant. What do you have for me? All right, Mr. Restaurant Man. Well, we can outfit you with some high-quality cutlery made out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. It's biodegradable. Used once, you just put it in the compost. Make everything right as rain. Plates, benches, tables. We've got you completely covered. We are your one-stop shop for your restaurant. And to-go boxes. Mm -hmm. Lots of to-go boxes. Refrigeration? You need a refrigerator? I do need a refrigerator. How is cardboard going to help me with that? We got great cardboard refrigerators. We can wrap your refrigerator in cardboard. Yeah. So I could buy a, a refrigerator made of cardboard, or I could buy cardboard insulation for my existing refrigerator. Yeah. All right then. And cardboard cutlery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you guys get like paper cuts? You have, you have paper there, right? In your world? Yes, we have paper. You know how much that hurts, right? How sharp paper can be? Yes. Ooh. Now imagine cardboard. I don't have to imagine cardboard. I mean, we do have cardboard. We don't use it for quite the same variety of things that you're using it for here. Then I don't think you have the right cardboard. Maybe we don't. We do have a lot of other things, though. So how long has this obsession with cardboard been going on here? Since we discovered trees, so been a while. How did you end up on cardboard as the sort of the solution to so many different things? We just inventive. Yeah. You just got to make the best use of what you got. And what you have was? Lots of cardboard. Yeah. Right. Sure. I feel like we're going in a circle here, maybe. We had one of those like furniture stores that made furniture out of wood, and they had all this extra sawdust lying around, and it got wet, and then we realized you could actually make a product out of that. And realized how stupid it was to create things out of wood when you got this perfectly good sawdust and water that you can make cardboard out of. And that was... It's like a never-ending resource right there. 
okay, so you figured out cardboard was such a great resource. Yeah. And all of your technological development suddenly focused on cardboard from then on? Is that, that kind of the, the yeah. gist that I'm getting here? That seems about right. Mm-hmm. That's a really singular focus. I feel like you might be missing out on a lot of other really interesting things. In fact, I don't just feel like it. I mean, I can tell you that you are because I've been to a lot of different dimensions with a whole variety of different technologies. Like and what? What are we missing out on? Well, television. You ever heard of television? No. Now, television, it's a screen you look at and it's got moving pictures and you can watch a show where it's actors. It's like if you go to a play. Why wouldn't would I want to see that live? You still can see plays live, but also you can see them every single day in your home on demand. That seems ridiculous. That's crazy. That's crazy talk. What a waste of time. Doesn't it make going to the plays list special? Actually, going to a play or a musical is more special, I would say, because we don't go to them very often at all because we can turn on the TV at home Back or even at this point at in our pockets. This device that I'm using here to record, as you can see, I can play videos on here. I like turtles. All right, you're great. Hey, it's like a moving picture store. Good times here. Yes, right. that is exactly what village, it is like. Open for the next and days. pretty much everyone has one of these in their pocket in my world. Because we're not weirdly obsessed with cardboard. No offense. You both seem like lovely gentlemen. I'm just, mm, I'm not super into cardboard. How could you not be into cardboard? You want to see what I got in my pocket? Sure. Why don't you show me? Oh, it's going to get ugly. Mm. Nothing. (laughs) (laughs) I have to say that was kind of anticlimactic. That's why they call me anticlimactic Frank. It doesn't roll off the tongue, but it's it's true. What they call me. What a nickname. Yeah. Yep. My father had a knack with names. Your father named you anticlimactic Frank. Yep. Really more of a prophet. Sure as the day is long. (laughs) So all this technology you got, like, there's no downside to it? I get a lot of enjoyment out of the technology. I mean, as long as it's working. There are certainly times when, you know, the printer says, PC load letter, and I'm like, PC load letter? What is PC load letter? Yeah. I don't even know. That's why I threw that printer out. It wasn't made of cardboard? It was not made of cardboard. That's a problem. Mm-hmm. The, printer, the printer was made of plastic. Plastic? Mostly plastic, yeah. You don't have plastic here? No, I don't think so. No, I guess is that, I, is that I a fancy kind of cardboard? Do. I guess I don't see anything here made out of plastic. Yeah, now that you mentioned that. Mm. It's all cardboard. All cardboard, all the time. All right. Tell me something you can't make out of cardboard, and I'll call you a liar. This smartphone. Liar. I'd love to. <laughs> You're a lying liar. All right, well, you are at least true to your word. You're wrong, but you did call me a liar, so which is what you said you would do. All right, fair I was, enough. I was right. See? Cardboard wins. That is unassailable logic. And, oh, you know what? That is my alarm. I'm going to have to head out. So, you know what? It's been lovely learning about all the amazing uses for cardboard that I never knew of. Perhaps if you guys happen to run into anybody with a scientific, technological type of mind, maybe encourage them to think about some of the other things they could be looking at that are maybe non-cardboard related. There's a whole world out there you could be discovering. Right. Yeah. This whole world that's in the broom closet. Well, that is where I'm going, yeah, but the portal's gonna close behind me, so. Please, Maxwell, next time I see you, you need to make sure to be wearing at least business casual. You will get fired so fast if you are not wearing business casual. I'm sure the next time you see your Maxwell, he'll be wearing whatever it is he's supposed to wear. I'm going to go pop through that portal that's in the closet there and probably won't be seeing you again. So don't worry about it. All right. So mm-hmm. long, Maxwell. Feel better. Yeah, I, I feel great, but thanks. Don't look great. Don't look too great. All right. Bye now. Can you believe how negative he was about car? I think maybe that's why his sales have been down. Maybe, yeah. How can you not be like like loving cardboard? It's such a wonderful material. Yeah, I think he's lost it. Talk about plastic. 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 Television. In the television. Great. The portal's still here in the closet. I mean, I was sitting right there. I could see that nobody went in here. 
And let's pop back through. All right, I'm gonna shut this thing down and take down some notes about Cardboard World, where everyone's weirdly obsessed with cardboard. That was probably the weirdest thing since Broccoli World. So, I'll see you next week. Dispatches from the Multiverse is produced by Tim Ellis, starring Scott Trapp as Only My Grandma Calls Me Wilson, and Tim Ellis as Max, with special guest Dave Weiser as Anticlimactic Frank. Theme music by Alpha Geek, logo by Abe Schmidt. Follow us on Twitter at DispatchesFM, and visit us online at Dispatches.FM.